Welcome to this introductory video about Gridler 2.5 Pro. So, what's the Pro version really all about? Well, it's really about equipping the user with a full range of tools to enable him or her to easily and completely define and describe the solar cell as a device as well as analyze it. From the Design H pattern page, you already get to define a lot more details in the front and rear grid patterns. You get to define the shape and dimensions of segmented bus bars, the way that the bus bar ends near the wafer edge, whether the fingers are tapered so that they are wider near the bus bars. You also get to define other wafer dimensions such as fifth cut, and you can also lay out the front and rear bus bars in the arrangement uh, of a shingled module where the bus bars are placed right at the edge of the cell. You're also equipped with a kind of under the hood view of the cell cross-sectional model, which leads to calculations of the light induced current as well as recombination current densities. Here we can choose from commonly used incident light spectra like AM1.5G. We can also import the incident spectrum as well as the substrate absorptance after accounting for reflection and light trapping on publicly available platforms like PV Lighthouse. We can also import or define doping profiles like the phosphorus emitter, which enables calculations like saturation current density and blue response. We can further predict the recombination under the metal contacts after accounting for alterations to the doping profile due to the metallization process. For perk cells, anti-bifacial cells, or any cells which have local metal contacts to the base, you can also pull up this base local contact calculator, which uses published analytical equations to derive effective base recombination and resistance parameters. The cell cross-sectional model puts all these inputs together to derive the light-induced current density after considering effects like free carry absorption, blue loss in the emitter, and base collection loss. It also calculates the saturation recombination current densities in the emitter under the passivated region and under the metal contact, as well as the base in the passivated region and over the metal contact. And at the push of a button, all of these parameters will be transferred into the relevant boxes in the Gridler simulation page. Gridler 2.5 Pro is also equipped with a constantly updated database of parameters, which saves you a lot of time in collecting them for your cell type. To access it, just hit this question mark next to the cell parameter that you have doubts about, make a keyword search, choose the reported value that's most relevant to your case, and hit apply. And we can do this for all the cell parameters that we don't have first-hand information about, but we're just looking for a kind of typical value. Next to each of the numbers in the database, there's also a little description uh, that's relevant. For example, in this case of finger contact resistance, we have information about what kind of silver paste is used, as well as which sheet resistance phosphorus emitter that is applied to. And if you want to read the source in detail, just hit get source, and we'll point you to the page from which you can download the original paper. It has a really easy to use script builder that allows the user to define a workflow, for example, starting off with a certain set of baseline parameters, changing the parameters, and then examining the impacts of the parameters changes on the IV characteristics. And the trends can be plotted inside Gridler Pro itself. Gridler Pro also has inbuilt functions to find the optimum number of fingers and plot the trends of efficiency versus number of fingers. It can also perform a whole batch of IV simulations while varying any cell parameter. And then it also got options for you to vary more than one parameter if that's what you need. The list of advantages of the Pro version doesn't stop here. For example, it's also better equipped to simulate module in the field conditions with higher than 25 degrees cell temperature, external series resistance, and then for researchers who use Gridler to work with mapping data, one can input spatial distribution of parameters more precisely in text formats or output the voltage and luminescence distributions over the cell plane also in text format for further analysis. And then, as we figure out new ways to make Gridler Pro more convenient to use, we'll be incorporating these updates free of charge for existing users of Gridler 2.5 Pro. We are also expanding the resources in the YouTube channel so you'll already find quite a few instructive videos about how to use the unique features of Gridler 2.5 Pro. And we encourage users to check out these videos and check back periodically for updates. So that's it for now. Do write us if you have any interests, and we'll be very happy to hear from you.